I'm uh, CP Chandrasekhar. Um, most people refer to me as Chandru for short. Um, I have been teaching economics now for more than three decades. Uh, been associated with ideas since its inception in 2001, and um, in in various capacities. And uh, I'm currently uh, involved in helping ideas organize its global research. The fact that, particularly since the 2008 financial crisis, but even before that, we've had a situation where macroeconomic policy in the developed industrial countries has been of a kind in which you've seen uh, the infusion of large volumes of liquidity by central banks in the developed countries, including, of course, the Federal Reserve in the United States in particular, uh, in order to save their banking systems, uh, in order to save their financial sectors, and partly to try and use. Uh, the monetary lever to try and pull these countries out of the Great Recession into which they they fell after the the financial crisis. Uh, the result of that large infusion is that there's been a push of capital, a supply side push of capital, uh, high you know high yield, uh, th thirsty capital into developing countries, which has seen this huge increase in sovereign bond markets uh, because developing countries saw it as an op an opportunity to actually access international liquidity in order to give them some degree of policy space given vast accumulation of debt. And that has actually intensified the crisis. And finally, of course, you've had, um, well, a number of events you had in particular, you had the COVID pandemic and the impact that had and the ability of these countries to earn foreign exchange. And you had the increases in prices because of the speculative fallout of um, the war in Ukraine, where the international uh, commodity firms uh, essentially tried to use the opportunity to make large profits and that resulted in an increase in food, food and fuel prices and put all of this together this is in some sense uh, an intensified version of a creeping chronic long-term crisis which comes from the fact that these countries are embedded in a system which is fundamentally unequal. So, uh, in, in, over the next three to five years, uh, Ideas has decided that among among the many areas in which it would be engaged in terms of research and advocacy would be uh, reforming the international financial architecture and within that to focus in particular on the ways in which we can create an alternative template which is, uh, which is both fit for purpose but also which is not deeply inequalizing and marginalizing. Of The whole idea is that it must be possible, just as much as creditors come together under the, you know, by fronting the IMF as, as their as their you know, mediator and interlocutor, uh, as they come together in the Institute for International Finance, as they come together as banks, which uh, in some sense are represented by the Bank of International Settlements and so on. It's necessary to create a uh, a forum and a platform in which developing countries, which are now experiencing the damaging and devastating impacts of this unequal world order, come together such that they have a voice which actually matters, an individual country's voice or the voice of civil society in an individual country, let alone that of the alien symbols countries, may not be enough, but to create a platform and to have a, a, a sort of a common understanding, a common template on how we can restructure debt, uh, that would be excellent. And uh, we think that this is, it, that's a long, it's, 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 it's a long haul to get there, but we are hoping that this would be one small step in that direction.